Hello everyone, welcome to the class on congestive heart failure. In this video, I am going to explain about pathophysiology of congestive heart failure. Let us understand what is this term congestive heart failure meant by. The function of heart is to pump the blood. Heart failure means when heart loses its ability to pump the blood, that condition is called as heart failure. During heart failure, all the blood will remain inside the heart because heart lost the ability to pump the blood. It stays inside the heart and it results in blood congestion or blood pooling inside the heart. So heart failure results in congestion of blood inside the heart. Hence the condition is known as congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure is also explained as heart is unable to pump the blood to meet metabolic needs of tissues. Let me repeat this, heart is unable to pump the blood to meet the metabolic needs of tissues. What do you mean by these metabolic needs? When blood is pumped, blood carries oxygen as well as nutrients. By using this oxygen and nutrients, all the tissues carry out their metabolism. During heart failure, blood supply is reduced. When blood supply is reduced, oxygen and nutrient supply is reduced. So that will affect metabolic efficiency of tissues. Hence, it is explained as heart is unable to pump the blood to meet the metabolic needs of tissues. Now, why this condition occurs? It occurs due to dysfunction in systole as well as in diastole. Systole means contraction of heart, diastole means relaxation of heart. Let us understand about systolic dysfunction. Systolic dysfunction, the primary precipitating factors are ischemic heart disease or hypertension. Ischemia means reduced blood supply. When blood supply to the heart is reduced, it results in ischemia, which may lead to myocardial infarction and finally muscle death. Thus, that result in systolic dysfunction. Hypertension, I have explained in the previous video, wherein we have seen hypertension increases after load. After increase in afterload increases ventricular wall tension and finally it results in muscle death. This also results in myocardial infarction and finally systolic heart failure. So chronic hypertension will finally results in systolic heart failure. Now after this let us see about diastolic heart failure. Diastole means as I told you relaxation. During heart relaxation heart will get filled with blood. Now, when this occurs, the precipitating factors are hypertrophy of the heart. Hypertrophy means increase in size of heart. When due to the congestion, the blood will exert pressure on these ventricular walls. To withstand that pressure, heart will increase its size and this is known as hypertrophy. Now, during hypertrophy, fibrosis also results. Due to this hypertrophy and fibrosis, heart will lose its ability to relax and that results in diastolic heart failure. Now, along with this, you have certain other terms like forward failure and backward failure. Let us understand about these words. Forward means whenever a systole occurs, whenever heart contracts, blood will be coming out of the heart. This is forward movement of blood. Now, when systole, due to heart failure, when systole is not working properly, forward failure occurs. That means heart could not pump out the blood. This results in decrease in cardiac output. So, this is about forward failure. The next one is about backward failure. Now, when heart, uh, when, when forward failure is there, heart will be filled with all this blood. A congestion of blood occurs. Now, veins will carry out the blood into the heart. When this congestion is there, it causes ventricular uh, venous congestion also. Venous congestion means veins could not drain their blood into heart. This is known as backward failure. Now understand this one, backward failure occurs as a consequence of forward failure. So these are all the terms which explain about congestive heart failure. Moving further, now heart failure could occur to left side of the heart or it could occur to right side of the heart. Let us understand what all the differences between these two things. Now, as you can see the diagram, left side you have oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood comes from lungs and gets into left atrium. From left atrium, it falls down to left ventricle. From left ventricle, it goes to iota. From iota, all this oxygenated blood is supplied to entire uh, body parts. Now, when left ventricular failure or left heart failure occurs due to either ischemic heart disease, hypertension 
or when there is a problem in valves valves like mitral valve and aortic valve both these valves are present in left side when when there is a problem in these valves or due to this ischemia or hypertension left ventricular failure occurs now what happens with this because left ventricle is failed cardiac output is reduced when cardiac output is reduced systemic perfusion is reduced perfusion means blood supply now look at the diagram if these chambers like the left side chambers are completely filled with blood blood supply from the lungs will not takes place properly because already the chambers are filled blood cannot be completely driven to this heart from the lungs so what happens in the lungs also blood accumulation occurs now this condition is known as pulmonary congestion pulmonary congestion now this pulmonary congestion results in pulmonary edema fluid accumulation in the lungs is known as pulmonary edema now this pulmonary edema will causes dyspnea dyspnea means difficulty in breathing because gas sections takes place in the lungs when the lungs are filled with blood or due to congestion difficulty in breathing occurs that is known as dyspnea not only this another condition called as arth arthopnea also occurs artho means a position apnea again breathing difficulty what is this position lying position or in a sleeping position when we are in a lying position venous return of blood to the heart increases that means more amount of blood gets into the heart and pulmonary congestion further increases so when people has got this left ventricular heart failure during night times the breathing problem increases that condition is called as arthropnea so left ventricular failure results in pulmonary edema and the symptoms are dyspnea and arthropnea now coming to the right ventricular failure now see right ventricular failure is a consequence of left ventricular failure when left ventricle fails all the blood accumulates in the lungs now right ventricle pumps its blood into lungs when lungs is already congested blood will get retained inside this right ventricle it causes ventricular damage and heart failure not only this when there is severe pulmonary hypertension is there this also results in right ventricular failure as well as tricuspid valve problems will also result in right ventricular failure now what are the consequences it results in systemic congestion systemic congestion systemic congestion results in peripheral edema all the swollen legs are are due to this peripheral edema not only peripheral edema it also results in ascites fluid accumulation so this is what is the gross differences between left ventricular failure and right ventricular failure in case of right ventricular failure peripheral edema occurs ascites also occurs in case of left ventricular failure pulmonary edema dyspnea and arthropnea occurs N moving further now look at the diagram this is a normal heart this is heart a congestive heart failure condition now due to the congestion excess blood is accumulated inside that heart to accommodate that excess amount of blood heart size increases this is known as cardiac hypertrophy now cardiac hypertrophy occurs due to accommodate ha cardiac hypertrophy occurs to accommodate the excess blood inside this heart now this cardiac hypertrophy uh, will further aggravates heart failure condition uh, there is a principle uh, related to heart let us understand this principle it is known as frank starling principle according to the principle when excess amount of blood is present inside the heart when excess amount of blood congested inside that heart even though heart failure is there with little contraction more amount of blood comes out why because inside the heart lot of blood accumulation is there so this will Uh, increases cardiac output so this condition is called as compensated heart failure compensated heart failure means even though heart failure is there cardiac output is compensated because of this frank starling principle this cannot happen all the time due to the excessive ventric excessive uh, ventricular pressure by this blood heart failure or heart muscle damage occurs this results in decompensated heart failure that means heart can no longer increase cardiac output so this is what is the meaning of compensated and decompensated heart failure now cardiac hypertrophy can be physiological or it can be pathological physiological means when there is a growth spurt during pregnancy when people do exercise 
cardiac hypertrophy occurs especially in case of athletes cardiac hypertrophy is very common thing now there is a difference between physiological and pathological things in physiological hypertrophy there is an increased capillary density is there increased capillary density means excess amount of blood supply to the heart will be there at the same time heart rate is decreased as well as cardiac output is also decreased both these factors will reduce oxygen demand so the hypertrophy will not cause any further damage in case of athletes in pathological hyper uh, cardiac hypertrophy it is not the case in pathological hypertrophy this condition occurs there is a decreased capillary to myocyte ratio is there decreased capillary to myocyte means decreased blood supply decreased oxygen delivery and it results in ischemic injury ischemic injury will also cause myocardial infarction and fibrosis both of them will result in cardiac muscle death now look at the condition hypertrophy occurs to accommodate the excess congestion inside the heart but it causes it aggravates the condition of heart failure moving further uh, not only in case of heart there are certain neurohumeral changes and uh, the chemicals released from kidney also changes in case of heart failure especially in, when cardiac output see the may, the cardinal sign of congestive heart failure is reduced cardiac output this immediately increases sympathetic nervous stimulation and renin angiotensin aldosterone system activation will be there because of both of the factors there is increased heart rate increased cardiac output now the reason why cardiac output heart rate is increased is body will try to increase the perfusion to heart and brain for both the, these are vital organs and for these vital organs perfusion has to be maintained but this comes with the expense of remaining tissues will have less perfusion of blood take the case of kidney kidney will be having less amount of blood supply because of this it immediately activates renin angiotensin pathway aldosterone increases and it results in fluid accumulation the moment fluid is accumulated again congestive heart failure condition is aggravated so neurohumeral humeral aspects and kidney aspect will also aggravate congestive heart failure condition finally in vasculature also certain changes occurs hypertension diabetes mellitus both of them will cause vascular stiffness that means the ability to contract blood vessel and dilate blood vessel will be reduced that is what results in vascular stiffness another important feature is endothelial dysfunction endothelial cells are basement cells for blood vessel now in end endothelial dysfunction means there is a fine balance between endothelial nitric oxide synthase and reactive oxygen species generation when this balance goes out of control that is called as endothelial dysfunction what happens with this endothelial nitric oxide synthase generates nitric oxide it causes relaxation of blood vessel whereas reactive oxygen species they generate oxygen radicals which will cause contraction of blood vessels so when the balance is goes out of control reactive oxygen species amount increases and it causes blood vessel contraction again blood vessel contraction increases blood pressure damages cardiac muscles again this aggravates congestive heart failure condition so this is the pathophysiology of congestive heart failure thank you for listening this video